attracted to some of the major universities, uh, colleges, as students. But um, they, if if a person has the ability and wants to be, wants to and and can and can be taught. Some people have ability, but they can't be taught. Uh, they have it in their mind what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. They are hopeless unless you can change and make them have a change them into a person with an open mind. Because I've seen people come here, um, there isn't there isn't anybody that I can remember in the years that, that I was either a student or worked with students at Scotia that uh, rose above the crowd that didn't have some meaning in that direction to start with. Had, you have to be teachable. You have to be teachable. And and um, that that's what the, the people I know, that's what they were. They were teachable. What do you see? And of course they had they had basic ability too. What do, what do you see the major thing that's making our youth today unteachable? Perhaps lack of exposure. There was a time when, when um, we used to believe that um, everybody was was teachable in our in our schools. Um, oh, I can do that from here. And maybe if I could get just a little. But can I get some backlight from this lamp? Sure. This lamp. Oh, um, that lamp. Just turn that lamp on. Yeah, I think that's beautiful right there. Mm -hmm. What? Well, me? Do you want that one off? Yes, ma'am. That need to be on. Oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No, that's going to give me a bad glare right there on the let's back. Let's give you a bad glare. Let's give you a bad glare? Yeah, let's give it that. That's better right there. I have to be from way over here. Just if, if you allow me just to take you back, I think I was here in, I came to Scotia in, Barbara Scotia in 1981. I think that was the year Miss Portia had passed. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so many valuable things took place for me. And I guess, realistically, the strength to me was you. Because you were here, things that you had said, things that um, I took in wholeheartedly. I think I was that type of young kid that was on my way to being unteachable um, at the time, coming from California and the gangs and stuff like that, and Barbara Scotia gave me that chance. One of the things that I remember so tremendously, I don't know if you remember the conversation, there was a young man who told me one night, he said, James, I'm living a lie up here at the school because I flunked out of school and the dean told me to get off the campus. And um, he said, well, my parents have paid the tuition, so they think I'm up here doing uh, school, but I've already been told to pack my stuff and get off the campus because I wasn't going to class. And at this time, I think he started coming to the Bible study, and I just began to start talking to him. And I used that relationship at that time. I think I put my little one suit I had on, and I came to your office. And I explained to you what the young man was going through and what he was dealing with and that he was ready to make the change. And your words to me at that time was, James, uh, that's beautiful that you would stand up for this young man, but I need to speak with him. And so I think I went back and told him and talked with him and had a conversation with him. And he, he did come and speak with you. And through, um, I think, a couple of conversations with the dean, he was reinstated. Now, consequently, I don't, I don't know how far he took advantage of that opportunity of getting back reinstated. But, you know, those type of life-changing things and opportunities uh, that I've seen up front, you know, um, and I appreciate so very much. And I guess since then I've had the opportunity to go into a lot of different schools, high schools, like I said, with my son, and talk to a lot of young people. And I think, you know, what has been done here and what is being done here is so needed and necessary. And, you know, to be able to have conversation with you on um, 
points that I think are extremely important uh, as you're still, you know, the things that you're sharing are still touching my life even to this day. Um, and so, so that's the reason I wanted to ask simple questions like what you see needs to be done to change the thinking of a lot of young people to prepare them to be educated, to pe prepare them to take advantage of the new opportunities that are here that wasn't necessarily um, available to you and a lot of our ancestors. And, and so anything that you could share on that is valuable to me. Well, I guess perhaps I didn't expect some things or um, believe that some things were mine automatically was my own background of experience. My mother died when I was nine years old. And uh, I lived with first one grandmother and then another who were powerful persons. The first grandmother with whom I lived could not read nor write. And yet from her I learned so much about being available and being helpful and believing in people and um, not complaining about what you don't have but being grateful for what you do have. And uh, I remembered that I, oh, I had finished school and was on my own up in this area and um, she was ill and um, I found that, that the hope, the outlook was not very good for her. And I went back to talk to her, to visit with her because in all the years I lived with her, I never remember her raising her voice. Mm -hmm. I never remember any physical discipline from her. It was always a sitting down and talking about what you don't do and what you do and some things. And, and she used to say, I would ask, could I go over to such and such a place? Remember, I went there when I was nine years old. And I wanted to go visit some girl. And she said, no, you can't go over there. And I want to know, why can't I go with her? She's my friend. And she said, uh, well, she can come over here. I said, well, she comes over here, but I want to go back and visit her. And she said, just believe me, she is welcome over here. And I want you to always make sure that she knows she's welcome over here. But you can't go over there. Mm. Now I have my reasons. And I never questioned it beyond that. But she was always always accepting and embracing people. So much so, her name was Maggie, M-A-G-G-I-E, but most people called her Aunt Mag. Aunt was the word for aunt, and they called her just Mag. And I said to her, even white people called her Aunt Mag. And I, one day I asked her, because remember I didn't grow up there in the, the first nine years I was nowhere in that environment, just my mother and myself. And I said to her, uh, that that white lady call you Aunt Mag. Why she call you that? So she said, oh, just that's just the way they do. I said, why didn't she call you Miss Mag then? And she said, oh. I said, why didn't she call I never heard her call you Miss Mag. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, they don't do that. I said, why don't they? Remember, I'm nine. I'm trying to understand why this grown woman, and my grand, this was my grandmother, right. and she's calling her Mag. Or ain't mad. And uh, she said, well, you'll understand that after a while. That's just the way it is around here. And um, um, she said, but she's a good person. She's a kind person. There's nothing I could ever ask her to, to do for me that she would not do. So she was, she was exposing me to the, the positive side of the person rather than the term she was using. But, of course, later I came to realize that white people didn't give black people a title, you know. And that didn't mean they didn't, didn't think they might be good-natured, but it's just that they didn't come to that level of res They didn't consider that a level of respect. That was the way it was in those times. But I learned a great deal from her. And that has stayed with me all the time. She was a very giving person. And also the fact that I came to realize from her she could not read nor write, but when she died, and in her 80s, she owed nobody nothing, not a thing, 
and uh, she owned her own house and two others that were uh, rent free, that were in good condition. She could rent them. She owned land outside of the city of Wilson and uh, everything was, was well, but she never, I never stayed home from school a single day mm -hmm. to help with anything at home. And Monday morning was wash time because they didn't have washing machines and what have you see. Uh, but never had it, we'd get up at six o'clock in the morning so that by the time everybody went to work, my grandmother and my aunts, by the time they went to work, the clothes were swinging on the line in the breeze. And they even used that pot out, of, that iron pot out in the yard to boil things because you didn't have the, they had lye, but they didn't have bleach at that time. Mm. But um, school was always high with her. But remember now, she could not read nor write. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was high in her estimation so that her, her children and her grandchildren all finished college. And um, never once would you have known that she could not read uh, or write because she could manage money now. Mm -hmm. She had no problem with managing money, mm -hmm. not only for herself, but for those around her. Mm -hmm. So that. I'm, I'm curious if, if there was something that you would say to the young ladies, the young women, the young girls today, something that's on your heart, that if you had a chance to speak and, and they hear you, what would those issues be? I think that one thing where youngsters are concerned today, they need, they need to be exposed to a vision. That life doesn't have to be what it is at the, at the moment. Mm -hmm. That everybody can, you can rise. You know, you can rise. Uh, you, can, you can come above the circumstances in which you, into which you were born or you can preserve them if they were those circumstances that can somehow find or make for a solution to life's problems. But you do have something to say about your life and the quality of it. You do not have to be a slave to the circumstances. And some seem to feel like, well, I was, I, I was born in a family. I didn't, I didn't know my father from from anybody else, and I never had much when I was growing up. That may be true, but after you get through stating all the facts, then now, what are you going to do with the life you've had? That was the life that was given to you, or that was your surrounding, but what are you going to do with yours? Mm -hmm. Because you didn't live, you weren't born in the time your mother was born. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The strength of our people, what do you see the strength of our people have been, um, from a historical standpoint, and even now, the strength that's left in our people that we cannot forget. We must believe that tomorrow can be better. And we must believe that we have a part to play in a better tomorrow. It is not going to be a gift. We must participate in the, in the shaping and the building of tomorrow for ourselves. We have Whatever gifts we have, and we have varying gifts, whatever gifts we have, we are to use them in the building of a better life, rather than to sit and wait for someone to hand it to us. It isn't going to happen like that. And where it does happen, the people don't benefit that much from it. If it's a gift, they seem not to appreciate it to the extent that they preserve it. But what you work for, what you, you see, you can be. As people will tell you, Adults will tell you, when I was a child, this or that happened. They can tell you about the negative thing, but then they say, I knew I could do better than that. Or I decided then I wasn't going to be poor forever. Or I decided then that I was going to get an education because I saw what could happen without it. And so we do play a part in the cultivating, in the shaping of our present and our future. We do play a part. We're not mummies just walking the earth, you know. As, as one person may have said, that education is more than just the lighting of a candle, but a burning of a torch. When you think of education in the depth or in whatever form to define education, how do you define education? How do I define education? Or what would be the definition that you would want folk to remember that you gave of what education is? I think that 
whatever one learns, whatever skills one acquires, that together this, the learning and the skills form a sort of formula for the building and the promoting of life itself. You, you need the skills, but you also need the dream, the vision, the understanding that every day can be better. Every day can be better. And that we have a part to play in it. Some people sit quietly waiting for the good life to come to them. You're supposed to get out there and help make it. I think in, in 19, I believe it was in 1984 when in President, I mean, uh, uh, Jesse Jackson was beginning to run for president. Wasn't that in 84? I don't recall. Yeah, I, believe, I believe that was in 84. I think I was here then. You said some powerful thoughts of just making us aware of why that was necessary, whether he won or not. I'm curious now your thoughts of um, understanding our history as a people and then being able to see um, us have an Afro-American president. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think that that our all through through the years of, of my life, there have been uh, persons who had a candle that um, illuminated the surroundings of faith and belief that each day can be better than the day before and that they must use that light to find the path to put together the, the ingredients, so to speak, that can compose a better life or a richer life. But they must, must somehow find the way to it, knowing that, that there have been people who have accomplished with far less. And anybody who talks about his life can look around and find somebody who did better with less. I don't care. Sometimes, sometimes a person says, well, I grew up and I didn't have this and I didn't have that. And that's why I didn't become such and such a thing. I always wanted to be such and such a thing, but it didn't happen because I didn't have. But if you look around enough, and if you read enough, and if you expose yourself enough, you can find people who had less than you are claiming you had. And yet they have risen above the circumstances, which says, stop complaining. Stop talking about what you don't have and decide what you can do with what you do have. Beautiful. What is yours? Beautiful. Because that's all you're going to have anyway. So there's no point in using that as an excuse not to accomplish. Beautiful. When, when your thoughts of how God has played a role in our people's lives and education and then just our lives and then your personal life, have God has played a role in the strength the scriptures have played a role in strengthening this. Which I'm curious of your thoughts. Well, you see, for anyone to accomplish, you have to believe that tomorrow can be better. You have to believe that you can become. You can't be forever carrying the banner of failure in your heart or low achievement in your heart because somebody else didn't do it or because of the circumstances into which you were born. You have to believe that I am a creature of a, of a faultless God. And therefore, I may not be exactly like anybody else. There are no perfect twins in this world. But whatever the gifts are that I have, I must seek diligently to find out what are my strengths and to use them. Because everybody has some strengths. Everybody has some strength. Sometimes you look at a child that that um, you see infants sometimes on television where they're showing uh, pet ch uh, a child that um, seemingly is a no-no or has no mind of his own, uh, is lacking in physical equipment or physical parts, and yet you listen to the person who takes care of him and the person says, sometimes when I'm at my lowest, I go and pick him up, and he smiles at me and hugs my neck. Well, that's a contribution. Mm -hmm. That that child that was considered helpless, and somebody might have even considered him useless. But everybody has a gift for someone else. You just have to be open to it. Mm -hmm. You have to be open to it. Beautiful. To be available for the good things that can come your way. 
But you know, there are some people who go through life looking, who say nothing good ever happens to me. I've had a hard time. I've never had a good time in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way it's going to always be because that's all they, 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 they only have a light that turns on or shows or illuminates the negative. When, I'm curious when you when you think of Barbara Scotia, mm -hmm. 